Good morning, folks. Ionized helium plasma filament standing tall at the limbs and evaporating overnight. We've got your full suite of news this morning, starting at spaceweathernews.com, and the southern coronal hole system has been visible for a week. Patchy, attempting to leave the polar zone, which the north has been trying to do for the last month. These are some of the first signs that the 11-year cycle minimum in sunspots should be ending within months. The solar wind was already relatively calm, but in the middle panel, purple plasma speed, we see a further dropout of intensity down to the lower end of normal quiet range. Geomagnetic conditions will remain quiet until the next stream arrives. Monsoon floods in India. Death toll expected to crack 300 over the weekend, with hundreds of thousands affected and forced to evacuate. There are still a few weeks left in the season. Weather totals coming in from Australia. The Antarctic blast brought cold and snow that challenged Mark set nearly a century ago. Same goes for New Zealand as the system rolled through more southern high latitudes. The hail in the United States has been relentless. Thousands of waterfowl taken out as the system hit Montana, and then as it moved on to Michigan, the magnitude of inundation was apparent, with some regions accumulating 18 inches of hail. A pretty goofy climate article has come out blaming lower plant size on decreasing moisture in the atmosphere. Well, first, it is true that plant size is increasing and decreasing and basically is species dependent all across the world. But this one with the moisture really follows off the latest oops and flip around in climate science. I remember when they used to blame extra moisture that would create greenhouse clouds and flooding. Yeah, oops. On the more real side of things, I promised I would share that paper out of China when I found it. I did find it. The link below describes the solar forcing of Chinese climate and their 500 year cycle. And while we're getting in gear with real climate news, I wanted to catch you up with some of my favorite climate articles of the last two years. Princeton, Yale, and an international aerosol team paving the way for the oceans and the sky to tell a different climate story. Interesting piece out of Cornell's astrobiology group. They say that our eyes not being able to normally see biofluorescence is restricting how we look for life in the cosmos. They say UV excitation of this living light process could be so extreme on other planets that we could detect the biosignature, and they want to try. Hubble up next with NGC 2022. Interestingly, while most in the NGC catalog are full-on galaxies, this is one star shedding its outer layers, and we know from our few decades of observation that these bubbles are huge and were two separate events. Last but not least, a crack in the foundation. The time-energy uncertainty promulgates one of the key assumption platforms of all of quantum physics. This new paper claims to show it is not universally valid. While most of our lives care not for such minutia, when it comes to the extremes, particle physics, and universal cosmology, this would be an enormous problem requiring the rewrite of much of the quantum world. Website members, we've got your Fly on the Wall podcast coming up in a few hours at suspiciousobservers.org. After starting the month 200% over average magnitude 6 quake production, we're in a 13-day drought now. Eyes on blood echoes as this will end shortly. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.